Today on the Low Car Car Show series, every car is in the shop. The shop show from the Indianapolis Convention Center. That's where manufacturers and vendors showcase products for what else? The finest show cars. In downtown Indy today, you'll find some truly inspired work, like this 55 Chevy inspired by a bike. This car is a 1955 Chevy. Uh, I've owned it for 18 years. Um, it's the orange crate because back in the 1970s, I wanted an orange crate bicycle by Schwinn. It was a specialty bike. It was very expensive, $100, $100 back then, where a Stingray was $40, you know. And mom and dad couldn't afford that bicycle. So I decided to build my own 40 years later. It's a House of Color, Sunset Pearl, and Tangelo Mix 50-50. It's got a 496, big block Chevy, Jericho four-speed. I took the Schwinn emblems off the, the back of the banana seat and put them into the seat design. And I have a little Schwinn touches here and there just to bring out the old orange crate idea. Another thing too is there's been several hundred orange crate cars built over the years. This is the only Schwinn influenced one that I'm aware of, so. The door panels were airbrushed by me. Gassers inherently have aluminum interiors, but it's cold, so I wanted to warm it up and did an airbrush door panel and did some other airbrush touches inside just to make it feel warmer. All of the car is all steel, all real glass, weighs 3,680 pounds with me in it, so it's heavy. So it performs really well for a pump gas car. I'm just happy to have it at this time. Also happy is his son, Alan, with his own unique ride. The uh, car is this 1966 Nova. I've owned the car since April 2003, so roughly 12 years. It's got a pump gas 598 big block Chevy in it. The uh, front radiator cover and air cleaner is a handmade piece out of 50 thousandths aluminum. A lot of people think it's fiberglass. It's got a lot of unique shape. It was actually an influence from the uh, Detroit Autorama in 2009. I started off with making basically like a sheet metal frame a base to be able to hold the filter in. Then I actually sheeted the frame with another sheet of 50 thousandths, rounded all the edges off real nice. Everything's butt welded and uh, hammered, dollied to a nice clean finish, so it requires minimal body work. The engine's a 598 uh, big block Chevy, and, and trying to put an engine that size in, in the engine compartment that small is actually a bit of a job. I had to hand make an oil pan, I had to make custom motor plate, mid plate mounts. Uh, I had to notch the uh, shock towers to actually get the headers to fit. The headers are actually my second set. I've actually increased the size of the engine you know, over the last couple of years, put different power adders on it. Headers are two and a quarter to two and three eighths, you know, primary tube with a four and a half inch collector, which is actually really unheard of for a stock Chevy two front end. I first bought the car in April of 03. Friends of ours thought we paid too much money for it, but we saw that a really good foundation, a really rust-free car to start with. Before building the car in its current condition, I drove the car to high school. It had a nice you know, small block with a four-speed in it. So the car has made many different transformations over the last 12 years, and uh, it's been like this for the last five years. This next car, however, has seen a lot more service. This is my mom's Jeep. She used this to deliver mail since I was a little boy. This is a 1972 right-hand drive postal Jeep. And as a real carrier, she had to supply her own vehicle. In fact, it's still titled in her name and registrations in her name. She retired about three years ago. She had 40 years of service and we started building it and uh, built it for SEMA for 2014. Um, almost everything was hand built on the Jeep from the floor to the body. We chopped the top five inches and we had to stretch the body five inches as well to try to fit everything in the 11 feet. And we just ran out of room on the fuel tank and had to improvise to, to get everything to fit. A lot of hours just in fabrication. The challenge of getting everything in an 11 feet long wheelbase I would have to refabricate and move and redo a lot of things several times to get it right. She had a, a straight six in it, and this is a 383 stroker. It's about 450 horse. It's quite a handful to drive. And the steering came from Australia, from Retro Rack. 
They took care of everything, making it right-hand drive for me. And then I fabricated all the mounts and got it to fit in the chassis for here. With the guys from Stillwater at, at Kicker, they helped design the, the stereo. The paint is straight mixing white from PPG, so we can match the, the white of the postal vehicles. Want to give your ride show and go quality? Check out this week's Low Car Lowdown. This week's Low Car Lowdown is all about making it very comfortable for you when you shift. Now, Eric Tate's joining us here. Let's say Eric just bought a car that I had customized for me, and now he's going to drive it. That floor shifter is not going to be comfortable for him. Yeah, so what we've started offering is for the guy that just bought a vehicle or vice versa, that the lever is either too long or too short, you've got the option, like this is our 16-inch bench bin, you can actually change to either a shorter or longer length lever to fit your, your needs or your build. All right, and if you want to, go ahead and change to the knob adapter, which this is really nice here as well. Yeah, so the guys that have a knob that maybe doesn't have a button, now you have the option to use our knob adapter, push the knob down, works the same way as pushing the button. Awesome, or if you've changed the color of your interior, you have the chrome, you have the midnight finish, it's all available from Low Car. Made in the USA, quality, plain and simple. You can find out more, just go to their website at lowcar.com, and remember, they're also on Facebook. This edition of the Low Car Car Show Series is being brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GMA body parts and accessories. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. And by Low Car, quality, plain and simple. Welcome back to the Indianapolis Convention Center and the Shop Show. Bill Weber is the owner of this car. He purchased it at auction. And then after taking it home and doing a little examination on it, realized there was a few places that had been repaired and were beginning to fail and getting some cracks. But one particular place was the front. So what we did, we went to a company called Sermersheim in Evansville, Indiana, and bought a whole front clip for the car. And that consists of Everything you see from the windshield forward, we have to remove the windshield, bring it all back and glue it all in, uh, just like they did from the factory. This is a 283 small block Chevy. The only thing that we replaced was anything that was not refurbishable. So all the stainless, all the chrome on this car, except for a couple pieces on the bumpers, are all original. This was the Roman red and ermine white. This is the combination that it came in. The interior was black, like this, and it's period correct. The only thing that he wanted to do on this vehicle was radial tires, because this car come with bias ply tires. So when he brought it to us, it had the bias ply white wall tires on it. Another builder, another Chevy. This is a customer's car that we build at my shop. This car is a 1970 Chevelle convertible SS that's been converted into a pro touring monster, I guess I would call it. Uh, we did a Roadster shop chassis underneath of it. Uh, he wanted to have, you know, handling and performance. So, you know, 572 with some Holley fuel injection on there and a pro charger. So we're doing about a thousand horsepower out of this car but it's still very street drivable. That's the cool part about it. We actually initially did this car a long time ago. We started you know, saying, well, it's getting redone. Well, if you spell out redone, it actually spells red one. So we kind of played with the name and it's called red one is what we call it. But when people read it out, it's, it's actually redone. So it's pretty funny. Of course, this car not only showcases skill and imagination, but quality products. Seatbelt Planet is a custom manufacturer of seatbelts for all kinds of applications. Certainly hot rods and restoration projects, but also restyled trucks and any manner of vehicle that goes on the road. We were born out of the oldest existing seatbelt company in the world, which was Beams Industries. And then we've taken that and really niched ourselves with regards to custom seatbelt manufacturing. We actually seldom make the same seatbelt twice. So they give us custom dimensions 
and custom color request, and then we may see both specific to their request. We work very closely. We collaborate on specific projects with them where they will send us dimensions, we send them some ideas, and it goes back and forth until we get the final assembly done. We also make a number of uh, four-point harnesses for applications where people want kind of the a, a road certified and FMVSS certified seatbelt, but they want a four point or a unique three point application for a car that maybe never came with seatbelts in the first place. We'd make every manner of oddball tie down for uh, custom crates uh, to ship transmissions around the world for big Caterpillar equipment. We make tie down specific for that. Um, we recently did a seatbelt uh, for an armored car where they were having trouble with the seatbelt unlatching during a very highly explosive blast. And so we reconfigured a seatbelt for them that um, transferred the blast forces in a different direction so that the seatbelt wouldn't unlatch in that. We can tie down cargo, people, pets, whatever you need. Uh, we'll do it and uh, do it usually pretty quickly. Welcome back to our coverage of the Shop Show in downtown Indianapolis. I could be here all week long telling you about this 1931 Ford Model A Roadster. It actually is a Brookville Ford body, Brookville chassis. It became a secret Christmas present that we had to uh, drive through a snowstorm to get under the tree for the customer and his wife. Scary, I know. The car is called Senorita primarily due to the fact that it was going to have cowl art on it like an old World War II aircraft. We decided to move the cowl art inside. Of course, cowl art is always a girl, pretty girl. That's sort of where it came from. Building a traditional car, part of the fun is, is digging around and trying to find some things that are actually old. New steel is great, but some of the old things are cool, like the E&J headlights. That was tough to find. This is a rare item people used on hot rods way back in the day. Our shift knob, believe it or not, is an oiler off an old hit or miss engine. We actually have plug wires that came off a roll from 1958. Under the hood, we've got your traditional flathead Ford. The non-traditional part is it's a French block. The French bought the rights to do the Ford block so they could put in power plants and that. So the wall thickness on the block is thicker, so we could punch out the holes bigger, put in light rods, mercury crank, Navarro heads, electronic fuel injection. Our hopes is to get 200 horsepower, which doesn't sound like much, but in the flathead world, that's kind of a big deal. Believe it or not, the rims in this car are stock 1932 Ford. I did everything in my power to talk the customer out of black, but you know when it comes right down to it, you got to have a black roadster. That's just the way it is. But what about a vintage pickup truck? It's a 1936 Ford pickup truck put together for Mr. John Gardner. He wanted it restored and it kind of got out of hand, but he's very happy with the finished product. We picked it up in Mississippi. I actually drove the truck down there before we bought it. We lucked out, it's got a 49 Mercury engine in it instead of the original 36 for a little more horsepower. That was all rebuilt. Uh, we have S10 5-speed T5 transmission behind that for easier shifting and it's like an overdrive for it. H&H &H Flathead in California redid the motor for us, dyno tuned it. Basically all we had to do was set it back in there and start it. It's all original sheet metal on the truck. I'd say it wasn't too bad to fix, but like everything else, you smooth it out a little nicer. It has smoker windows in it to get them to come up and then move forward and back. There's an issue with the width of the glass. We put in new regulators and new locks. Well, they were a little bit wider and would catch and not come down. You couldn't see up there. The biggest challenge was the front grill. Ours had been smashed and nobody makes them. We spent some time on Ford Barn, eBay, and Yelapi Journal looking for stuff like that. Then again, we have some newer equipment on this. It's air conditioned, defrosters. It's tricky, but this is just as much fun. I'd do another one. Or how about a more modern pickup? This is a 1971 Chevrolet C10 pickup truck came out of Arizona. 
totally stripped the truck down, media blasted it, and just started working on it. I've always been a pickup guy and always wanted to take an older truck, a C-series truck like this, and make it into a, the ultimate street driving machine. Through Detroit Speed, we got talking about some stuff and just decided to build this truck. And one thing led to another. It was a year and a half long build. It's an LS7, brand new LS7 from GM. Heads have been gone through, different pistons, different valve train, dynoed at 625. We did that for the main reason to get weight off the front. When we started out, this truck was 65% front weight and it was just horrible percentages to go road racing. We wanted to get weight off the front. So carbon fiber hood, this is 60 pounds lighter than a stock hood. We moved the gas tank to the back from right here. Battery's been moved back. Aluminum core support, aluminum radiator, anything we could do to move weight to the back of the truck, we've got it down to 54% front weight now. The average guy with a MIG welder and a little bit of time and talent can do all this in his garage at home. He might also have time for a project like this. We manufacture both polyurethane, polyurea coatings, and also polyester and vinyl films. You know, we saw a niche in the market that general consumers were able to get their hands on the same quality products that professional dealers were installing. So that was where the Owls Liner brand came from. Basically taking the same bed liner formulations, the same quality films that we supply through our dealer networks, putting it into that do-it-yourself category. So, you know, Joe Plumber at home can get the materials, do it in his garage, and get the same results that he would pay for a franchise installer. We use modified sealing texture guns or our most popular application guns. You can use standard undercoating type guns, you know. You can even brush and roll a lot of these products. You know, guys are doing interior sound deadening applications. Simple brush and roller, get the same results. You're looking, say, a typical truck bed application, you know, you guys are gonna establish your primary tape lines. They're gonna scratch and sand the entire surface. So, you know, we provide some simple nylon cut brushes they can use to do that, or you can just hand sand it with 180 grit or more aggressive. Once you get that sanding done, come back with a pre-paint cleaner, and then you're gonna apply adhesion promoter that we give you in the kit, mist that on, let that tack for about 10 minutes, and then come back to it with the spray process or brush and roll. First time through, four to six hours. Now, you know, for versed applicators that do it on a regular basis, it's about a two-hour process. We sell everything individually, so you can buy the material by a one-gallon, a two-gallon. You know, we have all different volume packages for the base materials. You can buy the prep tools, the spray tools, everything you need. So it's just a matter of dialing in what your project is, what particular components you need. We bundle you a kit together, and off you go. This edition of the Low Car Car Show series is being brought to you by Rev Wheels, a revolution. Scorpion Protective Coatings, protect what's yours. Stage 8, the world's best locking fastener. And by Low Car, quality, plain and simple. Welcome back to Indianapolis, Indiana in the shop show. This car is a 1967 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia with a V10 Dodge Viper in it and we called it the Blue Mamba. It started as a customer's car and uh, we got part way through the build and they had more dreams than money so uh, Keith, the guy that co-owns the shop with me, we decided to uh, buy it back and, and finish the car off and kind of showcase what we're capable of doing. That's about 650 horsepower, a little bit of head work and some cam work that to bring it up. And it's, it's got the T56 six speed and then a billet aluminum independent rear end and billet aluminum independent front suspension in it too. It's, it's crammed in there, it's as bad as you can imagine trying to put something that big and something that small. It was hard to build because the engine's so big, so what we did is we literally put the engine on the jig and then built the car around it. So we laser cut the frame out. There's a series of plates and then we weld them together to make the tube. Every shape in it, it's, some of it's cosmetic, but bulk of it's in there for, for an engineering reason. It's to fit a lot of stuff into a very small space. Probably the worst thing with this car was, was getting the air conditioning system in. Uh, the air conditioning is mounted in the back of the car and then the consoles are double skinned and they act as the duct but to get even the pumps mounted, we had to clone the side of a Viper engine 
to reverse engineer the bracketry just to make the, the mount for the AC unit. It's a colossal engine and transmission. It's, it's amazing to see when it's outside of the car. There's less than half of an inch clearance all the way around the, the transmission for bell housing and stuff like that. There's just no room in this car for this size motor. Chrysler had a little more room when they built this black beauty. This is a 1965 Plymouth Satellite two-door hardtop. We found this car in a barn in East Tennessee where it had been resting many years. It was basically the shell of the automobile. No windows, no interior, no parts, no nothing, just a shell of a car and about 40 boxes that the gentleman said, hey, trust me, all the parts are here. Once I saw how clean it was and he told me the history of it being an ex-drag race car its whole life, still had the tow bar on the front, the super stock rear end, the frame stiffeners, just a 50,000 mile, quarter mile at a time car. The engine is built by PMS, Performance Machine Services, out of Sevierville, Tennessee. It's a six-pack engine, 915 heads, heavy-duty commando engine that they took and rebuilt to Mopar performance specs. We kept the target of, hey, what would this car been in 1965? Uh, so I kept the drum brakes, I kept all this trim, finished out all the stainless, you know, original legendary reproduction interior. Wanted it to look just like one of us would have bought it off the dealership floor in 1965. Taking a completely different approach is this street rod. We decided to turn it into a two-door sedan delivery style car. We cut the trunk in half to change the big hump back. We cut the doors out, welded them shut, filled in the panels. There isn't a part of the car that we haven't had our hands on and done something different in our style with. We will button up, finish the interior, finish all the inside stuff, and then we're gonna use it this summer, get, to, get it out to some shows, and then hopefully sell it. In my mind, the smallest details make the biggest difference, from the emblems and refurbishing the emblems to making new emblems, and just having every bit of the color and every inch of the car flow from front to back and making sure that all of the design kind of goes together. We're out of time here at Indianapolis and the Shop Show, but be sure to tune in next week when we check out the California car scene at the Seal Beach Classic Car Show.